All right, this is first grade, module two, lesson one. And in this lesson, students are going to be solving word problems with, with three add-ins. So it's like five plus two plus eight. And the big thing is two of those add-ins are going to add together to make ten. So why is this a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because we have ten fingers. And ten, base ten system, ten is a natural uh, landing mark, a benchmark that we want our students to be looking for, especially in first grade. We want students to, to immediately recognize number pairs that uh, have a sum of ten. One and nine, two and eight, five and five. And that's a big deal in first grade, and we're going to be using this module and our, our next several modules uh, to have students continually practice and get to um, immediately recognize number pairs that equal 10. The other idea is because we've got a, a 10 frame. The idea is the 10 frame is another reason why we want to find number pairs that immediately equal 10. So here we're told to read the math story, make a simple math drawing with labels, and then circle the 10. So parents and teachers, uh, with our first graders, they may struggle with the reading, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, your task is to make this accessible to them, so you may need to read the question to them. You may even need to use manipulatives where students, as they're listening to the question, they are going to uh, build it with their manipulatives as well. So we have Chris, and we have uh, he has bought some treats. He bought five granola bars, six boxes of raisin, and four cookies. So what is that going to look like? Well, five granola bars six boxes of raisins and four cookies. All right, so that's just one example of what we might be expecting students to do here. And then down here, we are going to write our equation. So we've got five plus six plus four. And what we want students to see is we want students to see that, oh, six plus four is equal to ten. And so uh, that is right here. Now all of a sudden you have this space over here. So ostensibly you're supposed to put the five there. So what they've done is they've kind of pulled it a little trickaroo on you here. By circling here, that's kind of like the associative property. Right, and that's in the teacher notes, associative property. But what they've suddenly done also is they've switched the numbers around. They've kind of changed the order. Put They put the 5 in the back and then the 10 in the front. That's called the commutative property. And teachers and parents, commutative. You are absolutely allowed to use these words with your first graders, it's perfectly fine. Um, we don't need them to spell it. Uh, but let them hear what the word associative means. Is When we put these two d numbers together to equal 10, that's called the associative property. And then um, because we're putting these two numbers together as opposed to putting 5 and 6 together, um, once we group the numbers, that's called the associative property. And then when we changed the order, that's called the commutative property. And that's perfectly fine for our students to hear those words. 10 plus 5 is 15. That means 5 plus 6 plus 4 is 15. So Chris bought 15 treats. So another example, Cindy has five cats, seven goldfish, five dogs. I'm going to leave the drawing up to you parents and teachers. We're not looking for awesome drawings, just representations. Now the idea is how many pets does Cindy have in all? So we have five cats, seven goldfish, and five dogs. And what we want to do is we want to find where is our uh, ten. Now in this case, students are going to have to get kind of creative and, and put a circle, it's not going to look like a circle at all, around the 5 and the 7. I mean, I'm sorry, the 5 and the 5, because that's how we're going to get 10. And, and then the 7 is going to go right here. 
So the idea is the reason they're asking us to put the 10 in the front and without really telling us it's the commutative property, and over here, really, to group the 5 and the 5 together, we would need to use the commutative property to put the numbers next to each other. Uh, but anyway, uh, the reason why they want the 10 in the front is so that we get students starting to recognize how to add 10 and 7, right? It's like a 10 plus some ones. That's the standards teacher. Um, the teachers, um, I want you all to know that the standards in first grade is that the way we're treating the teens is to think of the teens as a 10 plus some ones. So if we were to see 14, we want kids to immediately recognize that that's a 10 plus four ones, and that's kind of an important standard in first grade. Mary, she gets some stickers at school for good work. Woohoo, Mary! You've got seven puffy stickers, you've got six smelly stickers, and you've got three flat stickers. So we're going to put that seven, six, and three. Now, if I I happen to put it in exactly the order of the problems. Now, parents and teachers, if your students are looking in, kind of looking ahead, and they want to put the numbers in a different order than the way it was said in the problem, boy, let them do that, because then it makes making their circle a whole lot easier. Otherwise, they're going to have to do something like this, and that's kind of an ugly circle. So. Parents and teachers, let your students choose whichever method they want, as long as they're recognizing a number pair that equals 10. So in this case, 7 and 3 equals 10. And so it's written right here. And our leftover number is 6. So 10 plus 6 is 16. So Mary got 16 stickers at school. Last problem for this video, we've got Jim. He sat down at a table with four teachers, nine children. How many people were at the table after Jim sat down? Ooh, that's tricky. We might need to draw what this might look like. So there's our four teachers. Here's our nine children. And then here's our Jim. So the idea would be four nine and one is what are the three numbers that we are adding four plus nine plus one and this is perfectly in the right order to give us a ten right off the bat so I want students to remember to write the ten right here and the four back here although parents and teachers if this is not a hill to die on if they put the four in the front and the ten in the back that is perfectly fine and our answer is fourteen so there were fourteen people at the table after Jim sat down. That's the tricky part. Otherwise, students are going to get 13. And that wraps up first grade module two, lesson one, solving word problems with three ends, uh, add ends, where we're really looking for number pairs that equal 10.